one detail in the gospel that's so important is that it said, oh, the doors were locked. Jesus entered into the room. A number of times it mentions this seemingly, we think, this impenetrability that walls and doors make. But yet Jesus Christ moves his way into society, into people's hearts, into people's lives. And it was this image that Pope John Paul II used in his first talk after being inaugurated as Pope of the Church. He said, open the doors of society to Jesus Christ. And that became the hallmark, not only of his papacy, but really was the hallmark of his whole life. Why are these two men saints today, Pope John Paul II and John XXIII? Because they were popes? No. Because they were good bishops? No. They were good diplomats? No. They were effective communicators uh, in society and provided, you might say, a renewed view of the whole Catholic Church? Not really. It was because they embodied in their lives a depth of spiritual commitment to Jesus Christ and His power and His grace. And so, it was so effective in reminding all of us what we're supposed to be. I'd like to leave you with three basic, important points about the lives of both of these men. Their historical importance, their literary importance, uh, their importance in terms of the church's history, that will be well mapped out and some of that will be covered in the beautiful program that we're going to have. But the three things I want to say to you might not sound that important, but are. First of all, the spiritual spiritual equipment they took into their lives is the same equipment you have. They were baptized into the Lord Jesus. They were confirmed in the Holy Spirit. They frequently and regularly and devoutly received the Lord in the body and blood and the Eucharist. This was what sustained them. There's no special kind of gifts of the Spirit of these two men that sustained them. The gifts that Christ gave His church and gives to each of you is what sustained them and made them holy and gave them a deeper faith each day. So number one, what was available to them is available to you for your own spiritual growth. And though not everyone can be canonized, everyone can find their way to the Lord and save. Every one of you can bring a deeper faith to those around you, and they do, and you do do that every day. Second point I'd like to make with you is the context of their lives. John the Twenty Third lived through World War One. He was a chaplain in World War One. It was a horrible war. Some say it was even more brutal and bloody than the Second World War. John the Second lived through the Nazis and the Communists. He lived through some very upsetting and difficult times for the church, for society, and for the world. And yet, even in the context of all these difficulties, they kept believing, because in a very real sense, my dear friends, the ultimate anchor for all of us, for them and for us, is Jesus, His love, His resurrection, His hope, what He holds out to us in our suffering. We must remember that. That's what they hold on to them. Finally, thirdly, the most important point, is in some ways how they physically had to end their lives. I remember when the notice came in the, in the news about how they were saying that John Paul II had Parkinson's. At the time, I was pastor at a Lady of Mercy Church, and I had a lovely Polish lady who was my uh, laundress uh, and did the, the laundry for me, and I had to go downstairs and talk to her about the schedule. And she said to me, Oh, Father, it's so terrible. I said, What's so terrible? How can God allow the Pope to have this? How can He allow the Pope to have this? I said, Well, He allowed His beloved Son to suffer on the cross for us. I said, None of us are exempt. None of us are exempt. Status in the church does not exempt us from the suffering of everyday life. Pope John Paul II, as we know, died uh, with, with the whole world watching, an agonizing moment. Here, here a man of great, powerful voice, a great presence on the stage of the world. As we do 
reduced to what life sometimes brings older people to. Totally dependent, bent over, hardly able to be understood. And John the 23rd, those of you who may not remember, died of stomach cancer. Very painful, painful death. I had a dear aunt that died of it. And it's not an easy end. So sometimes when we look at the saints or the members of the church, the hierarchy or the popes, we forget that they really are just like us, struggling, praying, seeking God's help, trying to do their thing. 